Squad, how's it going everybody? It is July 6th, 2018, and I'm back. I apologize, I've been gone for a little while. I had told you guys I wanted to do Monday, Wednesday, and Friday uploads, and I've been gone for like a week, so I missed all of that. However, today is Friday, so I'm going to upload today, tomorrow, and Sunday, and I'm also going to upload another video Monday. As long as there's stuff going on, I'm definitely going to update and uh, try to uh, keep coming with the videos. Now, I'm basically going to just go over the same stuff I always do. I'm definitely going to touch on Kilauea today and the Hawaiian Islands in general. Um, we're going to look at the live earthquake maps. We're going to look at the volcanoes. We're going to look at ash advisories. And we're also going to take a look at uh, some, some tilt monitors, some data. I'll, I'll touch stuff. We'll just start from the top. Um, we'll look at Kilauea first, as always. Um, so the USGS, they, this is the most recent status report they've put out, and this is July 5th, 2018. Uh, Kilauea's lo uh, volcano lower east rift zone has continues with no significant changes during the past 24 hours. Uh, the spatter cone is about 180 feet tall at its highest point, and the fountains rarely rise above that point. The crew on the morning's overflight that the fountain and lava level in the upper channel were lowered than the past mornings. So that's good. They're thinking it's, it's you know, kind of coming back down. Uh, Fisher 22 is sporadically spattering this morning. Its flow is in, incandescent overnight and possibly stalled. Incandescent. I think that's right. Alright, um, basically the same stuff as always besides uh, Fisher 22. We come up here and look at so the, the the USGS released a new image of the Kilauea Greater Caldera collapse. So let me pull it up real quick. This is from May 5th to July 4th. That this time lapse will go over. And notice is the, if you look at the ground, so it starts falling right here. You'll see in just a second there it goes. So all this has been impacted. Watch back here as well. By about you already see where it starts shifting. And then now it's all the way back in. So if we pull this back and look at the actual monitors and stuff, that'll give you a better clue of what's going on. And same, same with the NSARS. The NSARS will also help you kind of understand. Before we get to that, though, I wanted to cover the lava flows and fissure areas. Uh, everything that's, I'd say that's peach. So peach color, that's from May 3rd to July 1st. Um, the red, which are, here's fissure 22, which we had just read about on the status report. That is um, from uh, July 2nd to the 3rd. So Fisher 22 is right there. It's to the east of Leilani Estates. And then we also had another one down here. We have two active ocean entries, which you want to avoid because of the VOG. And the other stuff that dip comes up in the air from the volcanic magma hitting the ocean. So, hold on, do I have another picture? No, not yet. Okay. Here, here we are at Hawaii. I have the camera, the gas, and the tilt monitors on. Uh, mainly at first, for new viewers, if you're new here, um, I want to demonstrate and show you that you cannot rely purely on USGS. You need to, you need to do your own research. You need to go a little deeper than what's being provided to you. Okay, so these GPS monitors, as I said, there's there's a ton of them. You know, you see all these stars, and you're probably thinking, oh man, you know. I can do some research, figure out what's going on, but if you look at them all, they're all out to every single one of them. There's not a single one that I have found. Either they don't work, or they're completely out of date, and there's no reason for that. Mauna Loa has not gone. There's been no activity over here at all, and none of these cameras work. Or, none of these GPS monitors work, I mean, I apologize. Uh, and the ones that do work like that hasn't been updated since May of 2018, so it's completely useless. Why hasn't it been updated, is my question. And that, there won't be an answer, you know. They just they just go unanswered. But here's a picture on the Mauna Loa Southwest Rift Zone. Looks like the sun's just now coming up. Switch on over here. Go to Kilauea. So here's Kilauea. This is known as Helena's Fault System, and this is Helena right here. This whole area. And this is the area where a lot of people have been worried about it actually slipping and displacing. It's known as the Helena Slump. Um, May 4th, there was a 6.9 earthquake that struck, and it made it, the entire place displaced by almost two feet. And ever since then, people have been worrying about this entire, it was, it was actually about this area, about right there. And I'll show you, I actually have the NSAR maps to show you when the event occurred, 
how much it displaced and where it like where it specifically it displaced at that that way whenever we keep seeing the the land rising or falling we know which areas are more prone to collapse and break away because they've already been impacted prior um, but before we get to that I wanted to show like I said none of these GPS's work down here and no different than the ones at Mauna Loa um, so that's why we use NSAR radars the NSAR will do exactly what the GPS are doing for us so we'll take those off for now we'll look at the cameras see if we have any new camera um, so yeah so these are all updated this is uh, Mauna Ulu hope I'm pronouncing that correctly and some of these cameras here in Kilauea are updated so we can look at the what, oh jeez. Yeah, there goes a new picture. I mean, look how deep it is. I said this is, I don't remember off the top of my head how wide it is now, but the depth was over a thousand feet deep. So, I mean, that's just insane. There's a good picture for you, though, of the crater. This is from the HVO, so the HVO tower right there. There's one overlooking. This is looking at Mauna Loa. They have it aimed down for some reason. Now we'll come over and look. Tilt monitors are pretty good, but it's kind of there's so much seismic activity. Uh, I, it's kind of hard to even tell what's going on, so there's no point even looking at them. Uh, new gas emissions. That was another thing I was looking at, um, which is something I, I noticed there was gas emissions over by the volcano house, and it's still there now. And I noticed that when it first popped up, and I had thought that maybe this whole air back here was going to start collapsing. And I'm not sure. However, a lot of these these tilt monitors indicate that there's something going on because as of I'd say the 20th this tilt monitor is broken this does not report data to us anymore and it's the only one over there the one down over here which is further south of it is completely off the charts I mean it's dropped almost 400 rads in I mean not long at all so just consider that you know what I'm saying so it, when you watch it I I don't know how much activity is going on over here because we saw the GIF image USGS provided and it didn't look like there was much ground deformation back here but the monitors don't work anymore back there for some reason uh, for some reason uh, let's go ahead and go back to our mo our monitoring now and um, don't you know I, I forgot there was a gas emission down here I wanted to show you right there so there's a new gas emission on the southwest rift zone of Kilauea. If this decides to update for us, there we are. There we go. And so you want to look for gas emissions. Gas emissions typically, this is this is defined by the USGS website, not me. Volcanic gases can be harmful to health, vegetation, and infrastructure. Magma contains dissolved gases, which provide the driving force that causes most volcanic eruptions. As magma rises towards the surface, the pressure decrease, decreases, the gases are released from the liquid portion of the magma and continue to travel upward and are eventually released in the atmosphere. So that's what's going on in my opinion. There's, there's the magma underneath these locations. You know, here's Mauna Loa. Here's Southwest Rift Zone down here. There's emissions coming up. And you can't track them anymore. That's as much as you're allowed to track on the USGS website. But um, they are marked. So it's just something to keep in mind, okay? Doesn't mean it doesn't mean there's gonna be anything there, but there is uh, gas emissions coming up. So now we'll take a look at the NSARS. Um, this one, I wanted to show you the difference when the um, the earthquake occurred. So this was the, the earthquake that May fourth. It was a six point nine. Look, this is the Helena place I was telling about. So here's the Helena Helena fault system. Kilauea is right here. It dropped. Here's a closer image. Four hundred and fifty millimeters. Okay, so I'm nearly two feet right there, and look at the ground motion. So when we when I go show you this next radar, keep an eye. So this is what it would look like if a major slip process was happening. If it dropped drastically by two feet, look at the lines. See how slammed in together they are, and right here is right there. And so just pay attention to that type of stuff. So it makes it easier when you're looking at radars. You know what a a major event now looks like on the radars. Okay. So we'll scroll down all the way down to the, the most recent NSARS they've released. Um, I believe it's the 4th, yeah. So this is from the 28th to the 4th. I actually going to go up one because I wasn't here. I don't think I reported on this. So this is the 25th to the 1st. There wasn't much. There was some drastic, or not drastic, but you know, minor um, slip, or not slippage, but it, it's, it's falling still. Negative 25, just like the week prior, it was still falling. But nothing like it, ha like it has been. It kind of balances out. At, and especially here now it's not falling nowhere near as much however 
Uh, if you take notice, see here's Mauna Loa. Notice there's not much going on, and same over here, not much ground motion. It gets real defined. See what I'm saying? And I'm not sure why the ground that's over almost three centimeters, and it's you know all around there. So kind of curious what's going on down by Mauna Loa, and why we have a new gas emission south of it, because that gas emission I had just showed you right there is new. Okay. However, the activity is not exactly there but somewhat around there okay so it's just something you should keep an eye on so you know I mentioned it come back and look at this you know the next time and uh, keep an eye on it with USGS as well with this monitoring program they they somehow try to push out as being legit now we'll go ahead and look at volcano discovery this is all the current ash advisories going on right now um, we have volcano Ibu in Indonesia Krakatau in Indonesia, Agung in Bali, uh, Popo in Central Mexico, and Rivendador in Ecuador, and Subancaya in Peru. All are listed with volcanic ash advisories, so they've all been recently active. And you know, I, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know why they don't report the actual um, how high it's being. They're like you know the ash advisory, like how high it's actually going. I'm pretty sure. It does not say. Not that I see. Okay. But anyways, we'll go back. We'll look now at the volcano live map. So here are all the active volcanoes. The warnings are the orange, and the red is the currently erupting. Orange is one step away. Red uh, is either it's it's erupting or it's it's about to erupt. So kind of take that into consideration before I start clicking on these and going into them. I also have this uh, earthquake map to show us because earthquakes, they're a good indication when you can look at earthquakes around volcanoes and kind of figure out if it's a if volcano activity, if you can see the magma moving, um, so, kind of somewhat like we're doing on Hawaii, but we'll do the same thing with this one. Um, we have a lot of activity down here in Indonesia with all I mean I feel like almost every volcano they have over here is gonna start erupting. There's a new one of a gung that's it's on the radar now. Krakatau is erupting again, which was listed as ash advisory as a red offer just a couple seconds ago. Um Cinnabung down here. All bunch of them. And now if you've read if in the past couple of days you've probably heard about the Cleveland volcano, which is located right here. Out here in Alaska and if you look at the earthquake map the seismic map there's been a ton of activity on the entire northern part of the plate this entire this uh, this is Russia it had just got hit by a 6.1 earthquake and it was 93 kilometers or 79.8 kilometers depth and that's not super deep but that's a pretty deep quake um, they said so all right here this entire this is all one big plate it goes all the way down entire place right here it looks like it's just displacing now some of this is along the fault zone though uh, the Cleveland volcano I was talking about is located about right there but the earthquakes a little off so it's not actually by the volcano site come on down here where um, so this is Sierra Negra down here in Fernandina and then we also have um, Samakaya down here in Peru and Popo down here in Central Mexico. So we'll pull up the map, see if we see any earthquakes or anything around those as well. So we do have an earthquake reported down there in uh, the Galapagos where Sierra Negra is located. And we also had an earthquake off to the side by Guatemala. But nothing by the actual um, volcano site there in Popo. Now I'll leave a link to all this so you can look at it for yourself. You can kind of, that's one thing I'm trying to provide you. I want to give you the tools, teach you how to do this because there's no reason to rely on the USGS. Uh, with my most, with the video before this one, I showed that the USGS does not report earthquakes, and I had proof. And you don't take my word for it. You can look at what I'm providing as evidence, and you can listen to other YouTubers who call them out as well. Um, the USGS is a whole. I don't know what they're doing now I know the people who work for USGS they mean well they're doing the best they can but some things are unacceptable and need to be discussed 
Now that's all I had for today. I just wanted to give you guys an update on you know certain things I haven't been able to talk about because I have I just been busy. But I will have another video up soon, and I will get back into my old schedule. You guys have a great day.